They climbed the hill one morning, the weather it was fair. The peak loomed high above the clouds and no one gave a care. They walked and cut and laughed that day and their dreams, they never failed. They're out to build a mighty trail for all of us to rail. The captain said a piece of gold for those who shaped me trail. So bend your backs and dig me lads. I know that we won't fail. So bend your backs and dig me lads and build this mighty trail. Tonight we'll sing and dance and tomorrow night we can rail. Yeah, I think all trail builders do that, you know. I think they all have, I don't know if they call it smoker, but certainly. And you know, every now and then you can have ham like have a hammock and uh, or a little bit of music and, you know. And, and when it's wet, some shade, you know. A little camp spot too. Yeah. No, this is a smoker, right? This is smoker, yeah, yeah. We had a couple of sangers and some coffee and, uh, you know, sat around and talked a bit of rubbish. But probably the most... Uh, concerning thing here like the dynamics of a team you know and uh, it's been happening a little lately I've been noticing it here and there with the team where people decide to sit and and have their smoko it's the silverback theory you know you know the gorilla like uh, the one who sits the highest wants to be the boss you know and Max has been sitting up there for a while now <laughs> he's been sitting higher than me <laughs> just looking at each other like <laughs> Yeah, I'm Glenn Jacobs and I come from a land down under, a place called Australia. And uh, the rainforests and jungles of far north Queensland where the crocodiles and cassowaries roam free. <laughs> you know, something starts, ignites, like skateboarding, motocross, mountain bikes was in this case, and it could be, you know, coffee machines, it could be anything. It starts on, starts on a growth, 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 but it'll, it'll bump out. It'll hit the ceiling. Skateboarding went like that and it dropped and it came back even bigger because the designs change and everything like that. But with mountain biking, we noticed that. Like people were getting good money, you know, and the good contracts and big teams. Cannondale specialised, you know, GT had these monster teams and there was a lot of money around. And uh, the UCI had some good sponsors. But towards the end of the 90s, uh, the bubble burst. It hit the ceiling and then it came down. And that's when I left the UCI along with about 20 other people. I lost my job. They didn't have much money for this mountain bike thing, you know, because there wasn't that many sponsors. And uh, like anything bad, always something good comes out of it. And for the sport, the activity of mountain biking, because the 90s was so race, 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 and a little bit of recreation, there was no trails really. You could go out and ride and signpost and things like that. When it died and it came back, of course it's been growing on this steady arc and it's been amazing, but it sort of veered right. Instead of going straight up again, where it was before, it's gone off on its own pathway and it's recreation. Trail centres, you know, where you, where you can go for holidays, destinations, is critical and that's exploding. Uh, gone are the days where you'll go on holidays and sit around a pool and drink some champagne and beers and go, you know, this is living. No, that's not living, that's dying. You know, because you, how boring is that? But I think we've got a whole range of people now that, are, you know, outdoor culture is so critical to them and how they live and how they, uh, you know, how they want to live in the future. We did a lot of mountain biking, building trails and everything before there was a thing called mountain bikes, you know, and, uh, um, you know, as a you know, 10 year old kid, a couple of mates, we'd be building trails out through the rainforest, out the back of our house, you know, so we could ride our bikes on it and stuff, and, you know, going through, uh, creeks and avoiding the crocodiles and you know going up some gullies and then then one of my mates said to me um, he said look at the, the size of that mountain at the back you know and a big old dirt road little logging road coming down the, this we should go there and we dragged our bikes up there and and used to ride down this really nuggety nasty rocky track you know but you know we were probably 10 12 years old about 1990 we started filming and we put a little video together called Ice Cream Heads from Outer Space because helmets came out around then. It was a lure to wear a helmet and they looked like fucking ice cream buckets, you know. <laughs> so we call it Ice Cream Heads from Outer Space. And, uh, and then that went on to mud cows and we, we filmed everything, you know, riding bikes off the top of the bungee tower and riding waterfalls and trying to do everything, everything you could think of, you know, you could do with a bike, you know. Um, and that was a lot of fun. And at the same time, that whole thing was happening with the World Cup. Let's bring a World Cup to Cairns. And, 
and people go, oh, the cans, that's where the video came from. And it just sort of tumbled on from there. And then we had a world championship in 96. You, you could become professional at track building and stuff like that, that was then. Lo and behold, within uh, maybe a month after that, uh, the UCI called, you know, and they said, listen, um, we think we need somebody on the world circuit. And, uh, you know, the, the riders and the, the um, team managers and the media uh, suggested that we get you. Oh, well, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and that's when I knew, hang on, shit, my life's about to change. We are sitting in, uh, in a beautiful little uh, timber cabin uh, in a place called Hergevater in Norway, not far from a little town called Flo, which is fucking unbelievable. <laughs> How could you have a place called Flo? And here we are. You kind of, you've heard about Derby and you know these names that pop up and World Trail is obviously connected to those names. So, uh, you know, oh, that sounds like, like an interesting thought. And when, when Glenn showed up here to do the footwork himself, so I, I sat down with Glenn and I introduced Högevarda and Flo and I said, well, it's, it's a really, really nice area, but not that spectacular. And then he walked around here for a week looking at the terrain and then he pulled me aside and he said, you're wrong, this is spectacular. And he started talking about how he found the terrain to be you know, really well adapted to, to building a mountain bike product. This land, she's asking for it, yeah. It's, it's a good canvas and we've got a fresh canvas as well. And we've learned so much in the past and we've taken all our new knowledge putting it into this and starting fresh. Grant has an eye for quality. You know, you may have fucked something up back 700 metres on the trail, he'll make you hike the excavator back up and fix it. Even, he doesn't care about the money, the business sort of side of that shit, he's like, fix it, our name's on the line. Grant is quality. And you could probably take that in his, you know, his personal life, his persona, his, you know, his attitudes to life. Growing up, I wasn't really allowed to ride on my own, so there was two trails that my dad would be like, you're allowed to go ride these trails on your own, that's fine, but any other trails, you have to take someone with you. And I thought, that sucks. <laughs> like, there's only so much fun you can have on these, like, two trails. They cross country, they're little cross country loops. And so I had these rock slabs in my backyard, and I needed something more interesting to ride, so I just cut these like really difficult trails in my backyard that I could barely ride. Like, I don't think that opportunity to do this professionally would have ever swung by. Like, and I always wanted to work outside because I just wanted to do something physical, but I was pushed like to the more academic side of things. Yeah, to be able to work outside all day and build trails and then like enjoy the fruits of your labor. Like, it really is a, it's a dream. I mean, World Trail has brought a way of thinking or a philosophy, you could say, into this project that is not seen many places around, uh, around Norway or, or any place really, I think. Whereas uh, they go about the work really gently, I think, and they, they open up a hillside or open up a, a face of a mountain which was inaccessible before. So, uh, you know, I was, I was hiking along with the planners up here for the trail that they're building right now. And I think we spent like one hour just to crisscross a small section because it's so inaccessible. Dense forests, big rocks, all that stuff. Now there's a trail there and it opens up something which was completely unavailable before. So, and we've already gotten that feedback from, from guests coming up and saying, well, I couldn't access this mountain before, now I can. Uh, and that trail looks spectacular and it doesn't look forced at all. It looks like it was always there. It, it kind of it crisscrosses in between the rocks and over the, behind the trees and you know, over the streams. And it's, it's, it just feels natural. It flows in, in, in the perfect sense. Connects really good with the name, doesn't it? It flows. <laughs> well, look, what makes a, a great trail builder is, uh, you know, certainly you have to have passion. You have to have an understanding. You've got to be a rider. That by itself doesn't mean you're a good trail builder. You know, you have to have an understanding of, of drainage or sustainability, you know, um, safety. And the biggest one, which everybody throws a word around called flow, which is called predictability. Um, that predictability could be the smoothest, nicest flow trail, or it could be a janky, hard, you know, really 
Janky hardcore downhill track it still has predictability. You have to nail that correctly. And um, you could build the best trial in the world. Constructability, build the best thing in the world, you know. But if it doesn't ride well, that's not really a good trail. Or you can build the best feeling trail in the world, but if it's not designed for 50, 80, 100, or 1,000 riders a week, it's not a good trail, it's gonna fall to pieces. You know? So you've gotta have an understanding of all of this and uh, still have your passion too. You've gotta to be dedicated. You've gotta do it seven days a week if you want. You know, even if you're employed, you know, or if you're working as a trail builder, you're happy to pick up the phone at nine o'clock at night or six o'clock in the morning and talk mountain bikes. And on the weekend, and when you go out on the weekend, and, and it shouldn't rub you the wrong way. That's just part of your life. Shit, I wouldn't come here if I didn't like trail build. Well, even if I didn't like bikes, I wouldn't even do this job. Like, what's the point? So it's all about, you know, these things. Like, that's, this thing got us here. This thing got me on a shovel in the bush. It's sort of what a hobby that we had as a kid. You progress, you're down to the local jams, you move out of that stuff, go up in the bush making the tracks, go a bit further. What World Trail really stands for is, is, is working with nature instead of against it. You know, you don't want to disrespect the trail. You don't want to build anything gaudy or ugly or cheap or unsustainable or, you know, fighting against nature. It's all blending and, and, and over time, nature will gradually come in and embrace the trail if you do it right, you know, not, not pushing against the soil or pushing against nature, you know. It has to be one. And that's critical, that's real for the sustainability of our industry too. I'll walk through and tag lines and go, this is where the trail's going. And, you know, somebody like Reese, uh, Ryan or Max will come through and they'll adjust it or go somewhere else. You can have five or eight DNA style trails in that same corridor. It comes down to the individual designer and we promote that, you know, and uh, um, that's your own core style and you're, you're experimenting, you know. You're the, somebody like Max, for instance, you know, to see him come into our our business as a 19 year old kid, you know? And, uh, you know, he, he <laughs> you know, his unique style, you know, and that's a beautiful, everybody is different in the world, you know? And the more different you are, uh, the more creative you are. I don't think anyone's ever gonna meet anyone like Max, ever. You're so different. <laughs> like, yeah, he's very creative. Like, you've seen the shapes Max makes, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> if you look at a piece of art, and you don't really understand much about art, you, you just go, oh yeah, that's it. But if you know a bit about art, you just go, I know where this guy's going, or where she's going. She, you know, wherever the, the artist is, you know, they're going, wow, I can, I can read into this. And if you weren't into mountain biking, you'd look at it, uh, you know, this strip of, you know, this dirt ribbon, going through the bush, you go, oh yeah, that looks all right, it's just going through there. But if you're a mountain biker, you know exactly why it's shaped like that and why it feels like that. And uh, that's why a really good trail, people appreciate a good trail. The newbie rigged some dynamite and lit a faulty fuse. It blew the rock and took them too, leaving nothing but their shoes. Now a hundred years have passed since the captain and his crew split the earth and cracked the rock that trail came rushing through. The trail, it goes on living, but that rock, it bears a scar. And if you ever drop that chute, a voice calls from afar. Bend your backs and dig me, lads, and build this mighty trail. Tonight we'll sing and dance, and tomorrow we can rail. We'll carve and shape the loam and dirt, no prouder folk they'll be, to carve a trail that plummets from the mountains to the sea. Yeah, yeah, guys. Gee, that's the way it
should be done. I reckon, I reckon we, 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 we